have here uh, Purdue women's basketball head coach Sharon Bursa to uh, talk about the 2014 signing class here with Kyle Charters from Golden Black Illustrated and Mike Carmen from the Journal and Career. So I will uh, turn it over to Coach for uh, an opening statement here. Real excited about this signing date today. Um, been here eight years, and we're continuing to try to make headway and have uh, top tw 25 recruiting classes. Uh, this class is ranked 14th as well as uh, 24th and 1, and uh, just have a lot of dynamic pieces today um, with these uh, five collective young ladies and just really, really anxious uh, for them to be on the court with us next year. So if anybody has any questions, please uh, go ahead and uh, fire away. Sharon, uh, a big class, obviously, with five. Just uh... oh, hold on a second. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I heard uh, I heard Tanner talking uh, on the on the replay there. Um, just a five-player class. Just. Uh, you know, was was it the goal to have a pretty big class here in 2014? Definitely. Um, one thing is we knew that uh, we would be losing, um, you know, three of our seniors uh, this year, and we knew to, knew that we needed to bring in a collective set of guards this past year with Bridget and Ashley, and now uh, two incoming freshmen with, um, you know, Justine Hall and uh, Keys, and then we lose three post players. So you know, it was very imperative that we recruited these young ladies for a very long time and that, you know, we needed a large class. Our 2015 could be three to five as well. So, you know, there's just a lot of talent out there. So we want to find the best uh, young ladies uh, that have great talent and great skill set for what we're looking for. Uh, you also have, you got some size in this class too and how important was it to get some bigger kids um, uh, in this group because you've got I don't know what, two or three kids over six foot? Definitely, Mike. One thing is, you know, when we lost Dre and Sam, uh, Sam Osterello, that was, um, you know, they're about 6'1", six, 6'2", six, but, uh, you know, Taylor's uh, manual's uh, absence now um, really, you know, forced our hand a little bit, and we found some great players. Bree Horrocks, uh, you know, re pretty much were the, was the one that verbally committed exceptionally early, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, that has so much agility and can uh, – you know, change uh, the entire defensive game for us, which I think is really, really important, and uh, runs the floor well. And then Haley Bodner, about 6'3", from uh, Utah, real strong, agile, thick body that uh, really can bang and rebound and also is a shot blocker and can score down low or face the basket. And then Erica Moore at 6'2", you know, and more of that power forward, someone that's very physical, um, that likes to grind down low as much as she possibly can, you know, um, to, to be able to be that physical presence um, that we definitely need. So, you know, having that size, but they all can really get the rebound and go with the ball. So uh, I think their, you know, versatility is a huge asset. I, that, I was going to ask, the, the fact that you have, you know, some more size down low in the future, does that change the way you might play down the line? Well, I think uh, changing the way we play, um, it's not going to be that big of an adjustment. I mean, okay. you're seeing um, if you if you sit and watch uh, some of the top teams in the country, uh, like UConn and Stanford, their I mean their front lines are huge. Um, you know, if you have the players that are six two, six three that can step out and and shoot the ball and cause a lot of problems with link on defense, you know, that's what we really need. Um, you know, really, we have a lot of quickness, but now we can have quickness and length. And I think when we went to the Elite Eight, those two teams, we had a lot of size and a lot of length. And we we know we need those obviously abilities. Uh, I think to enhance our game. And I think more teams are going four out, one in. And I think the more versatile and the better size you have, it's very hard to shoot over them, and you obviously uh, disrupt a lot of things on the offensive end. You have a couple players from west of the Mississippi. Is it easier these days? To, uh, to go elsewhere and, and get players? Uh, well, we always hope that we can with uh, the Big Ten Network, our national coverage. You know, we always talk about uh, the Big Ten is way ahead of any other conference because it's a national platform, especially for women. And I think that exudes, uh, you know, a huge statement for a lot of families where, you know, they're going to be able to see their daughters be exposed, not just nationally, but globally. 
And, um, you know, we've always wanted to go that way, but we've always had to have some type of connection, whether it was um, maybe an academic connection or uh, these young people were able to come out and be on campus because um, that, that's not always a, a luxury when you're, you're out west. So, you know, I just think it's expanded our globe and um, obviously expanding the Big Ten obviously is going to help us even more on the East Coast. So we're just real excited, especially with Justine Hall from Colorado and Haley Bodner from uh, Utah. Uh, with, with the two girls out, kind of out of your region a little bit, um, is there any, I mean, when did you start recruiting and when did you come across those two? I mean, is there any kind of interesting uh, fact that goes along with uh, how, how you found those two? Actually, um, not really interesting facts, but, um, you know, it was really ironic. We, we've, I've always watched uh, Regis Jesuit. They've always had some uh, great teams. Um, the high school coach is um, Carl Mette, who I have known for a very, very long time, and he played. Sam Ostarella played for him on our AAU team. So I've had that connection and reached out to Carl because we, we were really looking for um, a player like Justine Hall. So, you know, I kind of had that connection, and, uh, Justine has a very athletic family. Mom played at Washington. Dad played, um, you know, NFL uh, football, and they just really know their stuff. And they researched us, and we researched them, and they were able to come out and just fell in love with Purdue. Uh, she's a dynamic player, extremely um, ten tenacious, uh, great defender, which I love. Very quick step, and we just connected right off the bat. And I think it's, you know, just their background and uh, my connection with Carl, and then obviously doing all the research. And um, with Haley, uh, you know, we saw her mainly pretty late this summer. Uh, she was recruited all over the country, and um, I just really uh, had a chance to see her this summer, and she went to a lot of campuses all over the country and just never found the right one, and then we talked on the phone and um, went out to see her, and it just, you know, I said, maybe this is going to be the match for us since you haven't found that perfect place. And uh, so I think that story, obviously, is very unique because uh, we were looking for someone like her. She was researching and trying to find, uh, you know, another opportunity at a college, and nothing really just jumped at her until we came along. Sort of interesting, uh, although I'm, I'm not sure it's anything more than a coincidence, that you have three players here whose parents or whose dad played in, either in the NBA or, or in the NFL. Um, sort of interesting to note, right? You know, very interesting to note. Um, you know, it's uh, we haven't had that in the past, but I think it's fantastic that, you know, we, we have uh, families that obviously have been in the athletic world in so many different facets, and, you know, that's been part of their passion and part of their life. And, you know, two NFL dads and, uh, you know, uh, mom that played in, uh, you know, Washington, and then, you know, you, you have, um, uh, you know, Bree's father that played, uh, you know, with the, the NBA for a while and being drafted. So it just, uh, you know, it's great for us. It's great for, you know, our fan base. But it, it's great for the young ladies that have been able to, you know, be around that since they've been at a young age. Is it uh, Adriana? Is that how you say her name? The Keys girl? Yes. It's Adriana? Uh, is yes. she? Yeah. Yeah, she's she, just kind uh, of a under under the radar kind of player, isn't she? A little bit. Yeah, it's Andriana Keys. Her nickname is just Keys, so okay. uh, nobody has to worry about her first name. <laughs> <laughs> um, she just goes by Keys, but she is under the radar. I mean, if you look at you know the, the press release and her freshman year, her stats and what she did for her high school team and continued to do during her AAU and just a very dynamic three player. And, you know, when you when you get hurt your junior year in high school, it's very difficult. Um, you know, that's when you lose opportunities. And we've been talking to her for a while, and uh, she actually got came back from a knee injury sooner and rehabbed and became uh, such a tougher human being and just was really impressed when she was released earlier this summer and I saw her, and you would never known that she had a knee injury whatsoever and uh, dominated when, uh, you know, we watched her play. And, we thought maybe we'd sign her late, but when we saw her this summer, uh, she has done everything. And why wait? Um, you know, it's a three. The three spot is a, an area that we uh, need assistance at. And um, you know, I just think her outside game, her power game, her rebounding, and her aggressiveness on defense uh, is a big key. And I think people are going to be amazed at her abilities. Um, and I think when you go through an injury like that, it just makes you uh, just an incredibly more competitive person. What do you like about Erica Moore? 
Uh, Erica Moore, uh, she's that power game. Um, you know, her, her, her body type is extremely physical. She's very intense down low. She can really, uh, she's a banger, which we love. You need to have that in our game. Uh, she can hit the offensive boards at the state championship. You know, she put up numbers, but she had as many rebounds as points. And, um, you know, we'll, we need that. We need somebody to be able to, to clear out and on a box out. And, and she now has worked on a variety of her game where she can get the rebound and go coast to coast. And she's working on her face-up game, a great 15-foot uh, jump shooter. And, you know, she's just hard to defend, period. So I think that's, uh, you know, she brings a special, unique quality that the other players do not bring. Uh, when you look at next year's uh, potential roster, uh, are, are you looking at April and Ashley as your as your point guards next year? Definitely, Mike. Uh, you know, April Wilson's always been that point guard or freshman and sophomore year, and, uh, you know, it's, it's her team to run. Um, you know, it is this year as well as the next two years, and she's been able to learn and play beside, you know, Courtney and KK for such a long time. So, you know, and that's where Ashley's playing the one and two this year, so she gets comfortable and has some confidence. But those two definitely are going to be the point guards, and um, you know Justine will come in and be a shooter with Hayden, um, Hayden Hamby, and um, you know I think that's something that's going to be real exciting for us. And Justine brings so much length too, so she's going to cause some havoc and uh, can really play one through three. Just considering you know Courtney and KK and and Dee Dee graduate, did you know that those three have sort of been the core of your team for a number of years? Did it make this class a pretty important one for you? It's a very important one, and when we're looking for this class, um, we're looking for the same type of uh, young women, uh, leadership, uh, kind of uh, community service, young people that are self-motivators, that work extremely hard because KK, Courtney, and Dee Dee are going to be sorely, sorely missed. They have been the pretty much the footprint of our program, and these five coming in, besides the ones that we have on our team, have to really... Um, uh, try to come in and do some amazing things, but it, it was mainly the type of young women they were. They're very skilled, but I think, you know, you, you just can't make up for what those three have done for our program. I'm not sure you talked a whole lot about Bree yet. I can't recall. Maybe you did, but just what do you what do you like about her game? Uh, Bree, initially when we saw her, I mean, she was, you know, our first verbal commitment. She was, um, to me, I think she, her upside is unbelievable. Um, you know, right now, and uh, she's rated as our, our top player in, in one of the rankings. And, you know, she, she's a workhorse. She's 6'5". She can squat and already sit down squatting, which most 6'5 kids cannot. Her work ethic's amazing. She plays for a great high school team. But she, what, what I like about Bree is that she can run the floor exceptionally well, has great hands, can finish with her right or left hand, can extend the floor and shoot the three. Um, at 6'5", and she's got a beautiful touch. And then on the defensive end, obviously, she's going to be able to uh, – it's going to be tough to get get down low and come inside with, with her length, being able to have her shot-blocking ability and just her presence down low to have to try to shoot over top of her. And, you know, she's going to have to rebound the ball well and be able to get up and down the floor. But she's not, a, she's not one of those big kids that you have to wait on, and that's what we're real excited about. So it seems like in, in one season you have depth on the perimeter this year, but then you go to depth in the post and the <laughs> forward spot next year. I mean, that's a pretty quick transition from one area to the other, isn't it? Well, it's a quick transition, but I think with Bridget and Ashley and Hayden and April, those four and adding to Tori Thornton, uh, you know, has a good chance of moving back outside. Um and maybe Jocelyn. So you know you have to move the you have to have moving pieces when you're you, when you're working uh, with each season. Um, you know again we had to work on moving pieces because of, of Taylor leaving. So we had to put more people down low. So you know we're going to have more length and, and more players than you can imagine um, on the outside and inside. We could go eight out and six in or seven and seven. But we've got to be extremely versatile, and those are the things that we're working on this year is our threes have to be fours and fours have to be threes if, you know, we want to contend to be a, a top five, a top ten team. I know you can only speak general terms about future classes, but you have a, a stretch here of this five, last five months that you've gotten eight verbal commitments. What do you think has been the key sort of to that, uh, I don't know, hot stretch, if you will? 
Well, I think the big thing is, um, you know, we've worked exceptionally hard uh, building relationships. Um, again, when we took over the program, we had to dig ourselves out for four or five years of the situation, even though we went to two Elite Eights and one Big Ten championships. And now I think, um, you know, Mackey Arena and the renovations have elevated our program to another level. And, um, you know, and, and those one, play, you know, the players in the 15 class, we've recruited those kids since they've been very small. Um, and we targeted them at a very young age. And we built those relationships. And they've seen what we've, we have done day in and day out, whether we've had injuries or not having injuries. And, um, you know, want to stay home and playing for their, for their state. So the 15 class obviously is uh, ex extremely exciting. And even our Verbo in the 16 class staying, staying in Indiana. So I think it just uh, took time to dig some things out. And now uh, we're just real excited having, you know, like nine in the next, uh, you know, so many years. We have a lot of work to do. But, you know, now it's up to us to, to gel it all together on the court. I'm good. I'm good as well. All right, guys. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody who watched. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks.